So it it depends on which hardware. There's some unsupported CPUs that do have TPM 2.0. Either it's provided by a motherboard uh, oh, chip, right, 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 uh, or it's it is provided by a CPU. But there's other features like uh, hardware based virtualization, which is also a requirement for uh, for Windows 11. Mm -hmm. That might not be supported in the CPU SKU that you may have. Right. Uh, so in that case, your CPU is not compatible, but you do have the TPM requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, but even in that case, you wouldn't be able to play uh, Valorant, for example, because I think it would block you since you don't have all the Windows 11 security features enabled. Okay, okay, that's annoying. <clears throat> uh, let's see, Valorant. I I don't play Riot games. Uh, Me neither. Uh, okay, yeah, two years ago they removed time. support yeah. for older versions of Windows 10. So maybe it's the newer versions that might have some of those Windows 11 features in it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, last year they dropped everything prior to 1709. Wait, no, that's two years ago. Okay, as of December 2023, I guess it's two years ago now, technically. Uh, to say they dropped everything below 1909 by the looks of it. Yeah, yeah. And th at the time they also dropped 7, 8, and 8.1. Mm-hmm. I, I would uh, say Vanguard's I... probably the most extreme of the anti-cheats out there. With like how, because like you know you can still play a lot of, like the 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 what do you call it like um call it like a lot of the Call of Duty games will still work on older versions of Windows 10 from my understanding, but Riot's like no no you you're gonna yeah. be on the newer stuff, get over it or don't play our games. Yeah, pretty much, and I mean some some gamers are fine with that. I personally am not. <laughs> I tend to avoid those types of games. Uh, but yeah, un and it's it's coming to a point where, unfortunately, anti-cheats do need to validate the integrity of the runtime. Um, mm -hmm. Because the whole the old system of just detecting like a cheat signature and banning it mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really work when you have cheat vendors that essentially roll out builds for individual users mm -hmm. so that they don't get caught by those signature based so signature based solutions mm -hmm. uh so it's it's unfortunately like a double-edged sword i kind of understand why those solutions are there on the market i don't personally support them mm -hmm. uh i personally think that it would be better if they would be server-side tools to do behavioral analysis mm -hmm. uh is it perfect? No. There's going to be some cheaters that are not going to be detected by behavioral analysis, but it's mostly because they're behaving like normal users, and at that point, is cheating really impacting normal users? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you have an uh, aimbot which only aims at them when you can visually see them, like, is that actually that bad? Like, it, 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 yeah. like you know, you have two kinds of aimbots. You have an aimbot which will x-ray, and you have an aimbot mm -hmm. that will only target things that are in your line of sight. Yes, it's still cheating. Yes, it should still be dealt with if it's known about. But it's certainly a lot less bad than, you know, being able to spot people without having any visual cue for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can still detect snipe, snap, like snapping to people even yeah, if they're yeah, yeah. just visually by, by behavioral analysis, right? So what, what you would have essentially an aimbot that will try to follow the, user, the, 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 the person, but as a human with some error and everything at that point you're just playing like a normal human and you're just giving yourself a, tr a crutch it's still cheating mm -hmm. it's still bad but it's not affecting the general population you would just look like a skilled player instead of looking like somebody who is less skilled it's still an issue but it's not as disruptive as the current sheets out there for gaming right. which personally speaking has turned me off of competitive gaming like, yeah i like i, I yeah. the only the only like competitive e multiplayer game i play right now is marvel rivals and it has got a bit of a cheater problem um when you die there's a kill cam and you will sometimes see like a hawkeye or a punisher that's like following you through a wall like you come out one side and then they just it's just in intuition they know you're gonna come out the other side where there's no indication whatsoever of it or the, the game has a couple of weird issues. Um, things that look like they're cheating, but they're not, because there's some, like, really bad code in the game. Um, some of the... Yeah, it's desync. Well, no, no. This is... It's so no, much worse even. than that. There is... Uh, so you know how you're not supposed to, you know, tie any of your game logic to frame rate? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some game logic tied to frame rate. Things like horizontal movement with uh, the... With Doctor Strange's, like, upwards dash... 
Uh, Star Lord's fire rate during his ultimate is tied to his frame rate. V I think Wolverine's damage is tied to his frame rate. Like, th again, Oof. just those are actual <laughs> problems with the game. But um, no, I do agree with the whole behavioral analysis thing. And there are some games I've seen where they will actually intentionally put things that troll x-ray players where they'll put yeah. like a player character outside the map or in an area they cannot get to so if you are seen to be focusing on that target just insta ban because no one can yeah. know it's there yeah yeah absolutely and valve is trying that approach i hear with the new counter-strike mm -hmm. the issue is that unfortunately the players don't understand that those types of systems take time to train right right it takes a while to get it right, and right now a CS2 is not necessarily in a super good place. Uh, it will eventually come. Uh, there's also like it's there's also the issue that it's costly for game developers to run those systems. You essentially have to analyze every single game. Uh, it's not like client side detection. You're using somebody else's compute. You're not paying for those costs. It's mm -hmm. great uh, when you're doing stuff server side. Like at some point, somebody has to pay for that compute, um, yeah. and there's no real incentive right now for game developers to do that. Uh, and until we see client-side solutions, even like the very invasive ones, stop working, mm -hmm. which will eventually happen. It's a game of cat and mouse. Um, we won't see developers shift towards mm -hmm. server-side detection, it, but it's going to happen eventually. The other, the other thing that people often talk about is actually employing like gms to analyze game systems that are happening analyze kill cams things like that and marvel rivals actually does do this so this is this is sort of like the the two-sided thing here they've got their entity mm -hmm. which is kind of like funky but if you report people and they're actually cheating they're gonna get banned pretty quickly i think they have like 40 people on staff that are just gming now yeah. you can do this because you are a free-to-play game that makes just a lot of money and you've 500,000 players on Steam, but I don't know. It, it's just not really super scalable to make that happen. Plus, it is very costly to have, you know, full-time staff that are analyzing things, and yeah, it, it, it's a mess. Valve did solve that issue, though. If mm -hmm. we remember in CSGO, there was the Overwatch system where you could report a game, and mm -hmm. then it was reviewed by players, where mm -hmm. players would essentially vote if it's suspicious or not and if there's enough reports saying it's suspicious then it would go to like a staff member mm -hmm. so the staff member itself would have very little uh bad data coming in you wouldn't have like reports for like normal stuff because it would be player verified beforehand mm -hmm. so players would essentially see an anonymized version of the replay for the for the suspected player and they would get to see okay well is is it suspicious or is it just the person is, I think the person is good. And then action will be taken based on that. So hmm. there's a solution out there to reduce the cost for game developers. Um, I really hope we're going to see a shift. That said, for multiplayer, like competitive multiplayer titles, there's still some work that needs to be done on the Linux side for anti-cheat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and... Those systems somewhat already exist in the enterprise space, which is interesting. So you mean we like, already have um, the 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 thing the the thing that caused hundreds of thousands of Windows machines to be knocked out. Is that what you were getting at? No, no, not at all. So I'm talking <clears throat> in the server space uh, for a lot of enterprises. We have zero trust computing. Mm -hmm. uh, CrowdStrike. You're thinking about CrowdStrike. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. <laughs> there actually was the, people think about the Windows side, but there actually was like a big. Uh, screw up on Debian as well. <laughs> that that's what yeah. I was I was remembering there. Yep. So CrowdStrike does exist on on Linux, but again, it's mm. a kernel module. That's not necessarily what I'm talking about. But okay. there is zero okay. trust computing solutions that are out there. Uh, the For anyone who doesn't know that, that means, can you just explain that model? Yeah, essentially. So that model is, uh, itself is you create a chain of trust where you don't necessarily trust every single component, but you can trust the system as a whole. Mm. So you have hardware solutions that would verify the hardware itself that hasn't been tempered with then you we verify that the software hasn't been tempered with but then you isolate your 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 software package that you're going to run the server as much as possible so that the previous layers don't necessarily have a view on it so you really don't trust the environment as a whole but you can verify each part individually right uh so kernel signing is a thing that already exists in linux and you see it on enterprise enterprise uh, distributions like red hat 
-hmm. or uh, SLES, mm -hmm. where they would offer signed packages that are signed by themselves. So you can verify the, the source of it. Uh, Linux itself, when, Linux themselves, when they release a kernel package, they do sign the code source as well. And we have like a whole bunch of like signing is nothing new in the Linux world. When you download something from your package manager, chances are it's signed by a, a PGP key. So you can actually verify that what you're downloading is, is the thing that you were expect, mm -hmm. that you would expect. However, on the runtime, we don't necessarily see the same thing as you would see on Windows or Mac OS where application packages are assigned themselves. It's usually the distribution packages that are assigned, but once it's installed, the binaries themselves are rarely signed in Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you would have a solution that would allow for signing for every single one of the binary package that you would have, a software solution in the kernel, you could have some interfaces as well there where you would say, okay, no, the, the integrity of the runtime is there. Every single kernel module is signed by its vendor. We recognize those those solutions. And then an anti-cheat solution could say, hey, the runtime is good. There's no like self self uh, compiled packages there from vendors that we don't recognize. So there's no modification. We know like it hasn't been altered with. We're not running an hypervisor because that's also part of the hardware verification. Uh, so we're good. And there's stuff already that exists. Like if you look at Android, for example, mm -hmm. is somewhat loosely based on Linux. There is Android validation. I forget what it's called. Uh, Google does that. Uh, um, there's a name for what Google does. But you can verify that the integrity of Android uh, hasn't been compromised. It's used, for example, uh, you can't use Google Wallet unless uh, it passes that verification. Uh, Google, I forget what it's called. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm not sure that you need to search to find the documentation on it. Uh, there's the Play Integrity API, which is ah, the integrity okay, that you okay. go through, yes. But uh, I forget what the... the uh, there's a term for like the device itself uh, uh, assertion that mm -hmm. is done. And I, I haven't, that's something that I used to have at the top of my hand when I was very much into Cyanogen mod and modding. Android devices I haven't done that in a while, but you would you used to be able to somewhat bypass it and fake it. And nowadays, it's like really hard to do. Mm -hmm. uh, which, to be fair, sucks for personal freedoms, right? You want to be able. You use Linux because you want to be able to modify your runtime and, and configure your your machine as you want it. But at some point, if you're going to run a software that needs to validate the integrity of your device, there has to be a compromise somewhere. Right. And having signed sign kernel modules and signed kernels to me is a lesser evil and you can always choose to opt out and use whatever you want but you wouldn't be able to play like anti-cheat protected games if we do if we do go down that route